I will, I will start. My name is Amy Marie. For those who don't know me, I am the council president. I, I just always assume everybody knows me because I feel like I'm everywhere half the time. But again, people probably don't know me. Um, this is my second year on the council. Um, so my second year as president and my last year as president. So won't, won't be, you only get two years just like at the local unit. So um, I'm super excited to have Jenny as our reflections chair for Hillsboro because she's also the Hillsboro or the Florida PTA reflections chair for the second year. And that is super special because um, she lives right here in our county and she's got so much experience to share. So I'm going to let her take it away. And if uh, you, you have questions, you can pop them in the chat or whatever Miss Jenny wants you to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on, everyone. I'm so excited that you guys are interested and will be uh, partaking in Reflections program this year. So real quick, my name is Jenny Moon. I am the Reflections Chair for Florida State PTA, as well as Hillsborough County, and I'm also doing it locally at the my local unit level. So I've got the gamut of experience. So if you have any questions, please um Write, jot them down. Maybe we can go over it after our little presentation. Or I'm totally open to you stopping me in the middle real quick because I know sometimes we forget what we were going to say. So, or you can put them in the chat as well. So we'll get started. Um, this presentation is um, a little similar, if not a lot similar, to the one that we did present at the leadership convention this summer. Um, so you'll be kind of getting the experience of um, if you weren't able to attend the class and for our 2023-2024 program. Before we get into, um, let's see, my computer is very slow going into the next page. I apologize. Um, let's see, is it gonna do it? I'm so sorry, give me just a second. It's not gonna do it. You guys see the screen, right? Okay, let me try one more time. I'm so sorry. There we go. There we go. So just a reminder, our mission to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. Now, I love this mission, particularly for reflections, because really it is a very engaging program. Um, it involves the families, the communities, and it is a opportunity for all children at any level, any grade, any division to participate in this program. So, and our four, four fun facts about reflections, I'm just going to go through this real quick because I think everybody's here to kind of get to it. Um, founded in 1969, Reflections is known as the oldest and largest national art um, student recognition program in the arts. It encourages students to reflect on a common theme, which we'll go over and create their original artwork and literature, visual and performing arts. So again, we'll go over all the categories and all the guidelines. Each year, PT engages over 300,000 students and their families in arts education. I believe that number is actually more than that um, based upon last year. It's a lot, it's the whole nation. I, I mean, it's it's amazing. And it's a valuable tool for strengthening school community partnerships. That's where our judges come in and all of our celebrations. And participation in art programs like PT Reflections plays a critical role in student success by leveling play fields and developing students holistically. This couldn't be more true for our school in particular. I'm not sure about everybody else's situation, but our art program is being cut at our school. So I feel like Reflections is becoming a much bigger, you know, program in our school than it was in previous years. So definitely can incorporate that. So local unit reflections chairs duties. This is just a quick little snap. If you guys want to take a picture of it, I'm not sure, Amy, if this is going to be somewhere available, I believe, like a link to this. Yes, being... we'll put it on our website. And then um, we're also recording this and we will put it on our YouTube and send it out. So for if anybody that missed it or wants to review it. Wonderful. All right. So first and foremost, register your PTA's participation in this year's program with National PTA. I've gotten a lot of emails saying, hey, do you know if I'm registered? So we do. Um, I actually receive it because I'm the Florida State PTA uh, Reflections Chair. So I do receive a bi-weekly 
um, list from National PTA, whether you're registered or not, but there is a little bit of a time delay. So if you register today, I won't be able to find out till next week because it's a bi-weekly thing. So if you're in question and in doubt, because I'm going to be honest, I registered my school like twice because I forgot <laughs> that I did it the first time. So if you want to know, um, feel free to email us and I can get that information to you. This will be the first thing that you do. So if you are participating in this program, I hope you guys already registered, but definitely this link is in on um, Hillsborough website, as well as the national PTA website and Florida State as well. Distribute program materials, we'll go over that. Recruit volunteer judges early. I've already began recruiting, so this is earlier the better. Um, collect entries and coordinate judging, we'll discuss that further. And advance top entries to the next level, which for us will be to the state and celebrate and recognize students. And this is the funnest part of the entire program, I believe. So let's go on to some schedule and date deadlines. So local units, um, I'm presuming everybody on tonight is from a local unit. So set your submission deadline in keeping with your Hillsborough County deadline, which is November 17th, which means that you are you have the freedom to set your own deadline for your school. So everybody, no matter where you're at in Hillsborough County, um, will need to submit to the Hillsborough County. And we will be sharing information and submissions on how to do it. But by November 17th, and this is a hard deadline. So for instance, I'm just going to use my school as an example. I'm setting our school deadline for October 20th. It gives me over two weeks to coordinate judging, organize and be able to formulate and um, submit. It's gonna be via digitally, via Dropbox. So get all my files in order and get that situated. So I really highly recommend um, that you set your school deadline and give yourself that time. So you'll be able to go through the whole judging process without rushing through it and be able to accurately submit it to um, Hillsborough County. Um, sample schedule says on there mid-October to early November. Again, if you have a ton of people in your committee and you're, you have, you know, that um, man force to kind of go through it. So perhaps maybe you don't need three weeks that I would need. So it's, it's up to you and it's up to how busy your PTA is um, to review your entries and complete the local judging. Now, I know a lot of people inquired in the last couple of days about this um, local judging. I know there was kind of a heavy push on doing everything digitally. Um, again, I'm just using my local unit as an example. It doesn't mean you have to. So for our school, I plan on doing it in person because I just find that at a local level and to have that celebration and to be able to, you know, share the artwork with everyone at school and to kind of encourage reflections in the art program, we're going to be doing it in person. But again, you can do um, your judging digitally. You can have everything submitted digitally as well, too. Um, you can utilize your staff and school. So for instance, we're going to be utilizing our media specialists to collect and the students can drop off their entries and their original artwork if you're doing it in person, that is. Or you can utilize your art teachers or anybody else or any other space that you might have available at your school to do that. Um, you can definitely do that. So no pressure to do everything so digitally you can you do have that freedom and the choice to make that decision that fits best for your school and again november 17th is our deadline for hillsborough county reflections and, and you're going to be advancing your winners and i get a lot of questions about this well am i advancing what am i advancing just the top winner um this really depends and i'm going to go through it in the next slide but you're basically advancing your top three of each division of each category. So that's kind of the set rule that's set by national PTA. Um, units in a council advance to council reflection chairs. Units not in a council advance to Sunshine State. So we put this in here because there's a lot of, um, I'm going to, just because I do have the knowledge that we might be changing this on a Florida state level, um, we're in the midst of in discussion. So let's say you have a friend and the kiddo doesn't go to um, a, a school that with a PTA and they're homeschooled or, you know, they're studying online. Um, you do have the option, and this is the best option that is recommended by national PTAs to join your closest local unit. So 
you know, finding out the local units that's in your neighborhood. Anyone's allowed to join a PTA. So you can just kind of contact the school, find out that school's information, uh, uh, PTA information and submit it that way. Um, so I'm going to kind of leave that subject there because it is kind of in debate right now. So we're going to finalize that very shortly. And the next section for county councils, county and regional judging should be completed by um, January 5th. This is, again, that's kind of just as kind of giving you guys the idea. I know this won't really uh, affect everyone that's on here tonight because I'm presuming everyone is a local unit, just so you can kind of have an idea of what we're doing with the advancements, you know, the county. So local unit advances to county, county advances to state, and state advances to nationals. And hopefully a lot of um, everybody that's on here tonight, your students win, then you'll get an invitation from state to be invited to the ceremony. And that's sometime usually in May. So again, that those dates are being determined right now. Um, this is a part of reflections that um, not a lot of people actually know about is what I found out or kind of think like, oh, maybe this isn't us. Like we don't have to do this or we don't have the option to do this. Everyone can participate in this. And I actually, this is one of my favorite parts of reflections. So national um, PTA does a reflection theme search. So every theme that we have every year is a student suggested theme. So um, the information on here is school, students at schools with a PTA in Florida, even if the PTA does not not participate in the reflections program can submit their suggested themes. We actually have this um, guideline and the form to submit the theme on our Hillsborough County um, reflections page. And the submissions are due um, prior to October 20th. Um, so October 20th is the hard deadline. And they choose from that level from state of Florida, five entries of Antinational. And then um, if your student's theme gets selected, they win a hundred dollar award. It's it's a straight up hundred dollar check. <laughs> so who doesn't love that, right? So definitely encourage this as part of um, your reflections program, because let's say you have a student that, you know, might be interested, but doesn't want to, you know, is not interested in doing the art they can suggest theme. Um, this is very simple. Um, you just literally write what your idea of the theme is and that's it. There's no, nothing else that's fussy about it. So um, a lot of our, what I found out is a lot of our ELA teachers utilize this. So perhaps you can share this with your school teachers and see if you know they wanna incorporate this into one of their lessons. You know, um, We got a whole bunch of theme search because one of the chairs actually shared it with their um, ELA lead teacher at their school, they got over a hundred suggestions, which was awesome. So definitely can do um, use this as part of a lesson. And of course, this year's theme is I am hopeful because, and there's a little um, picture of the student. It was her theme from Hampton Cove Elementary um, School PTA in Alabama. And this was her, her suggestion. So she got to win and now um, a little explanation on the side. But again, I highly encourage incorporating this. It's fun, it's super easy, and um, you never know who might win. All right, so now we're getting down to the nitty gritty and the forms and the details of the program. So like I mentioned before, the first thing that we should all be doing is registering your PTA with the National PTA Reflections Program. Um, it is, again, on our Hillsboro uh, Reflections website, as well as the national website and the Florida state, it's everywhere. <laughs> and if for some reason you have a difficulty finding it, um, you can go ahead and email us at reflections at hccptaptsa.org and I will send you the link directly. Um, super easy and it's a must. So let's say you go through all of this program at your school and turns out you never registered and the deadline passes. Unfortunately, your students' applications became are not um, able to advance. So we definitely don't want that to happen. So make sure everybody does this. Um, kick off your program by ce celebrating National Arts and Humanities Month. Um, this year, it's in, well, I think every year, it's in September. It's a great way to promote your program. So again, one of the biggest questions that I get, and what do I do? I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. How should I promote this? There's so many different ways you can promote it. 
And again, I'm just going to use my school as an example. We plan on promoting this right off the bat at open house. We're going to share it because we know that all the parents are going to be coming. They're going to be super excited. It's the beginning of the school year. It's a great time to promote your program. And by program, I mean, you can make flyers. Hey, if it's your first time doing the program at your school, you can just explain it's an art contest. Um, not so much giving out forms right away because I, you know, we don't want to like overwhelm the parents right off the bat at open house. So more just promoting and letting them know this is what's going to happen. This is a theme. You can make all different kinds of flyers, posters. Um, we're doing a little reflections table where we're going to have our school QR code linked to our website where they can read about it. Um, definitely promotion is the key. We're also going to be promoting it through social media, our website, call outs via the school administration, um, anything and everything. Uh, there's no wrong way. You can even stand in car line and, and um, you know, have some signs, you know, reflections, art program. Um, again, if you've been doing this for a while, I'm sure a lot of you guys already have your way of promoting, but it never hurts to promote more. We're always looking for more entries. And again, back to the September National Arts, you can do, you know, like a fun little social media advertisement on um, every day of the week for the National Arts Month. Um, you can do a week or you can do the whole month sharing, you know, information about different artists and um, musicians and dancers and any of that. Um, recruit volunteers for your reflections committee and delegate tasks. So this is also extremely important because by the time you get to accepting your entries and doing all of that, you're going to want help. Um, promote your program, coordinate judging and host celebration events. Those all within your committee. So you could delegate somebody to just work on promoting and delegate someone just to recruit judges and coordinate that and set dates. And then, of course, the celebration, which I feel like everyone should be a part of. Oh, and I'm so sorry, I'm going to go back. So for the um, forms, this little volunteer sign up sheet, this is just something that we got from the National PTA. Don't feel like you're obligated to use this. It's just a resource that you have. Of course, everybody is so creative. So you can, you know, create your own sign up sheet and whatnot. Step two, customize and distribute. All entries are to be submitted digitally. Um, so we're going to be doing a Dropbox um, similar to last year. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about that. We'll be sending out that information. And I'm hoping Amy can maybe confirm that we'll do a whole separate workshop just on submission and going over the details of that, because I know everybody was um, had a lot of questions. OK, so now editing program materials to include. So we have uploaded all the forms, all the guidelines that you will need um, to distribute to your parents at your school and let them know what the whole guideline gives you an idea, like what it is, what the program is. OK, and then for each category, it breaks it down. So available art categories for participation. Now, this is another part that we get a lot of questions on. There are six categories, but that does not mean you have to offer all six. Um, there are certain schools that choose to only offer visual uh, offer visual arts or only visual arts, music, and dance. Um, you don't have to offer every category, but you do have to offer to every grade division. Um, I just don't want there to be that confusion. So it really depends. There is an art school um, in a different county that specifically focuses on music. So they only offer music as a category that they can participate in. So, you know, that is up to your discretion. And when you get the, when you go onto the, our website and look at the forms and the guidelines, you can omit and you can edit that. And if for some reason you're having difficulty with that, please, please don't hesitate to email me because I can go ahead and um, edit those forms for you as well, easily. Can I add that as well? On the top of these forms, the student entry form, there's like, bylaws, there's all these other questions. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, we'll, we'll help you figure that out. If you don't know those, because sometimes they're hard to find, we'll, we, will, we will work with you and we'll find them. A lot of that information, I can resource myself. I can get it for Jenny. So um, if, if the top where it's like member dues paid date and all these things, and you don't know what it is, the insurance paid date, or just we'll figure it out. 
don't, don't stress about that at all. Absolutely. I just wanted to, I'm going to go back to the other page. I wanted you guys to have a visual presentation of what she was speaking about. All right. So program deadlines, as I mentioned, okay, so you registered your school and now you're working on gathering your materials, the guidelines and the forms, the entry forms, and you're beginning to promote. But before you begin to promote, you're going to have to set a deadline because you're going to want those deadlines on your forms. So that's something that is done right off the bat, discussing with your PTA and your presidents and your board and figuring out, you know, what timeline you would like to have. So setting that timeline so that it coordinates with our submission date for Hillsborough County. Um, directions for submitting entries. Um, this part, mm, I'm not quite, yeah, you guys, you know, everybody's doing it differently. If you're doing it digitally, Digitally, then you're definitely going to have to include how they're going to submit it digitally to your, is it via email? Are you using a Dropbox? Are you using any other online format? Um, definitely add that onto the directions for submitting entries is very, very important because, you know, sometimes it gets confusing. Some people do it per, in person, some people do it digitally. And on that note, I do ask that, you know, just be a little flexible because, you know, some might not have the option to do it digitally. Um, maybe set up a date where you're at school, after school, you know, after car line, maybe they can just drive on through, you know, after car line and drop the um, artwork and the entries form to you. So I know there were several instances where, you know, we are digital, we are only digital, and it became really difficult. And we don't want to lose those students that, you know, did all that hard work, but was not able to figure out how to submit it digitally or did not have the resources or the time. So on that note, um, I think a little bit of um, flexibility is much appreciated. Um, distribute to program participants. Um, it just means you're distributing all the materials and the guidelines and the entry forms in a timely manner with accurate information on how they're going to be submitting this to your families. And whether that, whether you do that at your school digitally through like a Wednesday folder flyer, which is what we use, or if you do that um, paper form and you need to get it printed out, um, that's again, up to individual schools. Student entry forms, Google form or paper. Again, this kind of is that divide of, are you doing it digitally or are you doing paper form or are you doing both? Our school's doing both because I like to give everybody the option. Some prefer one over the other. Um, on a local level, I think it's feasible. Um, and I think it's, you know, just giving everybody a, a wider range of opportunity to be able to participate in the program. And rules and instructions, which are in the guidelines. Um, that part, I'm just going to add there, is not editable. Um, the rules are the rules. It's a national PTA rule, so everybody must follow those rules and guidelines. Um, and then on the side, it says include additional details in the student materials like contact information. And that was what Amy was referring to. Submission instructions, that's something you'll additionally have to add on to your packet, the reflections packet that the, the families will be getting, whether it's digital or in person. And additional rules for student eligibility. Um, let me just flip to the next side because as she mentioned up on top, the local unit reflections chairs must complete all fields in the PTA box. It's that gray shaded box. These forms are all, um, you can go in there and fill it in digitally. So once you download it, you can go in there and fill it in. Again, if you don't know the information, do not worry. Just let us know. We'll find out the information. Usually, though, member dues and the, oh, I can't see, insurance and the bylaws. Um, your treasurer probably has all that information, so you can, you know, go ahead and ask them ahead of time. Now, um, someone did ask me yesterday, actually, um, we just, we paid our member dues, you know, back in April, and, you know, I want to get this entry form out, so what date do I put on there? If you're not sure, you can just leave it blank and we can work on it together, but you basically from what I gather, and Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, you put the latest date that you paid your dues. In, it will correct? be for this year. So yeah. it, it will be your first dues payment, which should be, um, it'll be, it's usually the first one. Okay, so August, so probably like September 1st or end of August will be the first payment that your your local unit will make. Because most 
uh, local units have a bulk of uh, mm -hmm. membership paid. So we, you have to pay anything. You have to pay monthly any new membership dues unless it's under 10. So as long as it's over 10 and most get 10 in the first month or so. So that was exactly what you use. Yep. So make sure. And when you do fill out the gray portion on the entry form, we are highly, highly encouraging to type it in. Um, the biggest problem that we have is we can't read it. Um, when it gets to the next level and it advances, let's say your student entry form gets advanced to the state level and it, it's in handwriting and it's very, very difficult to read. So this portion, again, our entry forms are all fillable online. So you could fill it in and then you can you know, share it with your parents or print them out to share. But please make sure that this top portion is typed rather than handwritten. Um, student information right there is, okay, so this is a fun one. I, it's new. Um, I'm only on my second <laughs> year with the state. So a lot of this portion was filled out with the parent and the guardian information and the email. It was fully the student, um, like a high school student, their email, their phone number, their everything, right? So we've got a lot of emails from parents going, I didn't get anything. I got no information. I didn't even know they were a part of this. What's going on? It's because the student filled it out with just their information and didn't share it with their parent. So I know if we're in an elementary level, that's a little bit of a different scenario, but for middle school and high school on um, local units, please make sure that you can confirm that it's actually the parent and guardian name and their email address and their phone number as well. I mean, yes, we'll gladly accept the student's information, but we do need their parent information as well. So that portion right up there. And then you look right here, student signature. Electronic signatures are okay, but it cannot be where they type it out. It has to be where they draw it out. So that's usually through Adobe. So this is the part where, again, I'm very conflicted, digital, non-digital, because some people have Adobe, some people don't. Some people have experience using it. Some people have no idea what this means and they get frustrated. And I don't want this to be a deterrent in them, you know, turning in their entry forms because they couldn't figure out electronic signatures. So if you are going to be offering this fully digitally, 100% at your local unit, um, I would encourage having some form of like a informational like video on how to do the electronic signatures correctly, because once it gets advanced to the next level and you realize that it's not an acceptable electronic signature, again, it will not be submissible. So we don't want it to get to that point. So some form of, you know, sharing resources with your parents and your families, a fun little TikTok video, a fun little YouTube video on how to use it, or maybe perhaps even just set up a Zoom, you know, where parents can hop on, do your own informational reflections, you know, um, night with the parents. And then at that point, you can share these other details on how to do it. And if you're sitting here going, Jenny, I don't know how to do it either. You can email me and I will go through it with you. But it is uh, it is a program that everyone needs to have on their computer. It's mainly through Adobe. And I'm not like super tech savvy, so I'm not sure if there's another format. So if you know, you can kind of chime in. But for the most part, um, I believe everybody uses Adobe for it. Um, submission category and grade division. This part is also very important because like I mentioned previously, if you are not planning on offering every category, you're going to have to omit um, the form. You can go in there and you can delete it. So if you are offering all six, wonderful, you can leave it as is, but um, please make sure to edit that and uh, make that pretty clear before you share this entry form with any of your families. Title and submission details. This is absolutely required. Um, and so our theme is I am hopeful because. So of course you can use that as your title of work, but I'm going to be very honest on um, the judges. Once you get up to that point, they are gonna look for that creativity. So, you know, encourage your students to come up with an original title for the work. Um, on the side of that, on the right-hand side, it says details. This is for mainly, um, if you're doing literature, your word count. Um, if you're doing music composition, um, I believe the 
the format that you used, um, that you recorded your music. Um, the detail part is very important, especially, I, I'm just going to point out literature. And also for visual arts, um, whether it was color pencils, watercolor, oil, um, different types of paint. Um, it's those kinds of details that they're looking for. And then, of course, on the bottom of that, the artist statement is absolutely required. <laughs> and this is this is a fun one because we have to make sure before we advance any entries that you realize that the five year old Christina in kindergarten did not write a hundred word essay for their artist statement in perfect grammar. So we're looking for original artist statement in their own words, uh, not by the parents. Um, of course, if it's typed out in their words, like the parents typed it out, obviously because of digital submission, that's fine. It's just more of the um, type of wording that we're looking at. Um, and for the most part, it's pretty clear if it was you know, done by the student or the parent. <laughs> so please make sure when you're reading through your entry forms and double checking that everything is filled out correctly um, before advancing them to be judged that all of these um, form, all of these parts of the form are um, accurately done. You have a couple of questions. Yes, I was just going to say, I want to pause for a second. Yeah, you have, you have one in here. Crystal's asking, how about primary student signatures? So primary student signatures, they would just write it out, you okay. know, the way they would write their name. And then I saw one more. She's had her hand up. Andrea? Did you want to come off mute and ask your question or type it out? Nope. Crystal's my president. I just wanted to make sure her question was heard. <laughs> yeah. No, we got awesome. it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. For the primary kiddos, they just, you know, write out their name. <laughs> and again, if you're doing it digitally. And most, for the most part, people have like touch screens. So the kiddos can, you know, touch, just write out their name. It's super cute. Any other questions? Oh. How many entries per student? Is that what she said? Okay, per school. Yeah. How many entries per school? Ooh, wow. per school. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I don't know if you mean like advancement or how many can you accept. I can't see the chat box, so I'm not sure who asked. So if you so want, Wendy Whitney. She asked how many entries per school. I know at Walker we had, like I said, the first year we had 124. The second year we had over 140. Um. So it just depends. Hi, sorry. Can, can, so I'll just elaborate on my question. Yeah. Um, so how many, so once we've done all the submissions through the school and then we've um, got what you would, you know, what we would like to advance to the next level, how many of those can we advance to the next level? Like would it, would it be one per grade level or one per um, subject area? Um, that, that's what I mean by how many. Okay. Got it. Okay. It's three. Three is a magic number. Um, it's three per category per grade division. So Perfect. That, Thank you. And you know, people are like, "Oh, it's only three, but actually, it's per grade division. So three primary dance, three intermediate dance, three middle school dance. So it's it, it ends up being quite a bit. So it is three. Um, is there any other questions? Yep. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't. Tom, uh, tomorrow, how many judges are required? Okay, so there's no like set requirement for judges, but we do recommend having a minimum of four. Um, now, there has been times where, you know, if you're able to gather that many judges, I mean, I, in an ideal, let me give you an ideal world. In an ideal world, you would have an odd number of judges per category. So three dance, three film, three literature, three music, three photography, three visual. That would be great because you always want like a tiebreaker and we always recommend you have an odd number of judges. That's a lot of judges. <laughs> um, so if you're able to do that, fantastic. I mean, there is no limit to it because a rubrics, you know, you add it all up and you're able to utilize as many judges as you can as you'd like. Um, now just the minimum is we recommend at least four, four to six is the range. So if you can get four to six, you're right on par. And um now those judges will have to judge multiple categories if you don't have a specific um, judge per category. Um, I believe last year, you know, using my local unit as an example, I was able to obtain three per category. So that worked out well. Um, on that note for the judges, I mean, we will go into a little bit more as well, but I'll just, you know, jump on it now. 
Utilize your business sponsors at your schools, um, any experts that might be in that field. So I'll just kind of give you what I did. Um, I called radio stations <laughs> and asked for um, anybody that might be interested in, you know, judging a local art contest. Um, I utilized our art teacher at our school and asked if she has a we don't recommend using your own art teacher because they're going to be able to tell who the students are, especially if it's dance, because you can see them, and then, you know, photography, anything that where they could physically see them. So we definitely don't recommend you using anybody that's within your school that are already interacting with your students and might have that, you know, inherent bias towards that a certain student. So reach out to business sponsors, reach out to your art teacher and say, hey, do you know any other art teachers that can help out in this field? Um, con connect with your ELA teachers because um, your ELA teachers can help the literature portion and perhaps they, they have so many friends. You, they can connect to everybody in this you know, county. If dance was one of the questions I got last week, they were saying, well, you know, dance, you can see the student. I wanted to use our local dance studio, my daughter's dance studio, but clearly she's going to know it's my daughter and, you know, all of that. Reach out to Pasco County dance studios, you know, so you know that our students are going to the Hillsborough studios. They have plenty in Pasco, Pinellas, you know, around us. And for the most part, you know, they'd be very thrilled to help out in this, you know, in this program. So, you can use that. Any experts? Um, can't think of Amy. Do you know? Do you, how? What did you utilize for recruiting your judges? Um, I you I utilized like other local unit <laughs> leaders that weren't at my school because <laughs> you know I, I you know you guys could trade <laughs> experts because um, you know we're close to elementary schools, but I was a high school, so I, you know I, you can reach out and we have. Um, the Elks Club, we have um, the Moose Lodge, we have the American Legion, and they all are always willing to step up and help with anything we need. So I, cause I could even, I took, I could take it that, to them and they could kind of look at it and read the reflections. And so um, that's absolutely that's, and, and it's a great way. And this is the part where you're engaging with your community, you know, you're getting them involved in your program. And perhaps you can do like a little trade off like we offered to, you know, advertise like we used Bach to Rock is a music school that's local to us. And we were like, hey, you know, they're already our business sponsor. But, you know, in addition, we'll, you know, promote your business a little, you know, extra on our social media or website or flyers or whatever it may be. So um, you can always do that. And they I mean, they love coming like so again, we do this in person, the judging portion. And it is so fun to have them come onto our campus and walk through our art gallery, if you will, and walk around. And it, I mean, they have such a great time doing it in person. And also it's so fun, you know, you know, they get to see the actual artwork in person. It's such a difference. And um, so, yeah, you know, for judges, sorry, I went on a tangent, four to six, you know, <laughs> <at least. laughs> you could open, and like HCC students as well. Um, if there's Absolutely. students that, because there's lots of clubs at HCC, but you can reach out to uh, HCC. Um, so uh, we got another Tamara Ponce. She's asking, when you say three per division, is that three per grade or three per high school? I can answer this if you'd like, but um, the grade divisions are separated on the form. I know, I hopefully you can see it, but it's primary, which is pre-K to grade two, and then intermediate grades, three to five, middle school, six to eight, high school, nine to 12, and then special artists is all grades. So for high school, all the grades are together. It's just three for dance choreography. It doesn't matter the grade. It just for high school, they're just all high school students. Yes. That answered the question. All right, so speaking of judges, so coordinating your judges, as you can see that on your right-hand side, those are like the criteria and the rubrics that we all, uh, give to the judges. So. Um, a lot of the judges will be like, oh, how do I come up? What do I do? Like, how am I supposed to score this? It's already laid out for them. So super simple. Um, tap into the community around you when you're recruiting judges, consider the following. So as we just went into that, um, we went a little bit ahead. Number one, having school or district administrators serve as judges to increase recognition of the program and the arts. Great, great resources. Um, local art professionals like art teachers, artists, or art business people will have connections and can serve as a special celebrity judge. Um, 
I happened to just reach out to a random uh, journalist in Tampa and he connected me and you just never know, right? He connected me to a producer on Star Wars and he ended up judging the film category. And he's like this who's who Hollywood, like as executive, like producer who judged our reflections film. So, I mean, how fun is that? That's amazing. So you just never know. It never hurts to ask because you just don't know who, what kind of connections you'll have. Former judges and reflections advocates, again, former reflections chairs, they have lots of experience and using kept records from past programs years and re reach out to re-engage and find new volunteers. Students, like Amy just mentioned, students and art professors from local colleges and universities. These individuals may be looking for ways to get involved in their community. And for the most part, nine out of 10 times, they are looking for ways to get involved in the community. So absolutely reach out to them. And former state level reflections winners and recent graduates, these folks already know and love the program. So recruit them and let them feel like experts themselves. So if you happen to know anybody, you know, that their student um, won and they're well into their college life and would like to participate, they can do this because again, you can offer them to judge this digitally. So pretty much anyone can judge. Um, again, on the right with the criteria, all of this is in the guidelines. It's in the whole packet. So um, just like a, a quick overview, you know, um, there's number points essentially that they're giving. So beginning, developing, proficient, accomplished, advanced. Now, the fun part is um, on the judging rubrics form with the ones that the judges actually fill out on the right hand side of it, which is not up here. And I apologize for that. There's a little comment section. That's my favorite part because they give out the biggest shout out to the kids and such big compliments like, wow, I can't, you know, like they're inspired, you know, and they're professional artists. So it's kind of cool. And I always take it a point to share those comments with the students because, you know, it's going to motivate them or, you know, they might be like, oh, maybe I could have used that format or, you know, this penciling or yeah, that makes sense. So that comment portion is it's up to you to share or not, but it's a really fun portion that a lot of people kind of skip over. So if the judges have the time to fill that out, I do highly recommend asking them to, to give their feedback because you know, after all, we are trying to grow from all of this and learn. So um, I think it's fun that the students get to read what, you know, professionals have to say about their artwork. Advancement and celebrate. All right. So this is the fun part. Now you finish your judging and now you're getting ready to advance. Advance finalists to the next level, according to Hillsborough County PTA PTSA guidelines and deadlines. Counties are to send their top three entries like we just discussed uh, in each grade division and category. Um, all advancing entries must be uploaded to our Dropbox by November 17th. And again, we'll go over that and have another um, workshop in terms of how to submit. And also we'll be communicating via email to everyone with a very detailed written guideline on to how to um, submit. Um, just out of curiosity, does anybody on tonight have, you know, maybe no experience with Dropbox or very little or unfamiliar with Dropbox? I just wanted to get a, an idea of how familiar everybody might be. Okay. I'm going to take that as a, everybody knows what that is. <laughs> All right. So detailed instructions will be sent out. Um, celebrate your students. Assign awards by art categories and grade divisions. So there's this wonderful shoppta.com. And on that website is a great way to get your ribbons um, for to give out to your students for their um, winning entries. Um, there's participation just for, you know, participating ribbons. There's the award of excellence and award of merit. So people ask this quite a bit. Award of excellence is first place. Award of merit is second, third, perhaps even fourth, fifth. I mean, that's, we usually kind of stop it at that point, like up to four. But if you have ties, you know, there are those situations which you're going to have to have a tie break. But, um, Award of Excellence is the top prize. So you can um, go on to shoppta.com and check those out. And you don't have to utilize that. If you have a different form of, you know, uh, award that you would like to give out to your students, absolutely. Um, at our school, we do like bear bucks, which is like school money and the kids love it. So that's always part of their award. 
Um, perhaps you have, you know, baskets you want to, you know, parents might gather and donate and do like a basket for, you know, the winners. You can do any of that. So that's kind of up to your discretion and host a student recognition event for families. Um, I, this is the best part. It's like an art celebration. A families get to come out. You display all of the entries. Everybody gets to see. And then at that night, you can announce your winners. Uh, it's really, really fun. Um, you can do it on campus. You can do it off campus. We tend to kind of stick to doing it in our media center. So that's kind of been our go-to. But if you happen to have an empty you know, classroom in your school, you can always ask your admin if you can host an art gallery night or an art night and uh, do your uh, recognition that way. And of course, showcase student works at school and in the community. Um, I saw, and Amy, I'm not sure if you saw as well, last year, somebody submitted their uh, local advancing like school of excellence. And I cannot remember the school. They, it was in the Tampa Bay news. It was like a little, oh, it was down in, um, it was in South County. It was, was it Randall middle, but how awesome is that? You that was know? so cool. Yeah. yeah. And they did, a, they did a story on it. So yeah, to share that with your local, um, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it was down at Randall. Yeah, they, I just thought that was amazing because they have what the, is called the Osprey Observer, I believe is what it is. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Saba, but that's like their local newspaper and it's also virtual. So I, I see it pop up every once in a while, but um, I, it was in there. So I there are local papers other than just the Tampa Bay Times too, but it might be fun for us. I don't know if you know the reflection share for the council, but then maybe they could reach out to the Tampa Bay Times and we get a little press for yeah. our, that'd be really cool. Absolutely. So that's a great idea. Maybe we could take a lesson from that and um, we can reach out to Marlene and maybe get, get some, get some contacts and get our kids promoted and celebrated. And I love it. I love uh, celebrating just their accomplishments because they, they do work really hard, especially, um, at the reflection part of it is probably my favorite part of it, like how it ties together. So. Absolutely. And, you know, I saw another school, they made like a fun TikTok reel of all of their artwork. Uh -huh. um, that was really fun. To, I know I love anything like that. Um, and social media, of course. And there's also, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with it, but Canva has this amazing art gallery that you can um, put your um, students artwork into and it turns into this digital like you're flipping through a magazine it is so cool <laughs> that's awesome it's you like, should share that out to everybody yeah I, I am in the midst of creating my own right now so one that'd be that's really cool absolutely share and there's so many platforms now online where you can set up your own digital art gallery as a matter of fact national pta just shared it last week and it was like uh hey check out this resource adobe um, express yeah, we will yeah. share it again. Uh, we will actually not again. We will share it on the Hillsboro if we can. It's a yeah. cool, I forget what the company's name was, but it's, it looks like you're walking through MoMA, mm -hmm. but it's your artwork and it's all digital. Like, you know, during COVID, everybody went on like tours digitally. Yes. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> it's exactly like that. So there are so many ways to promote and so many ways to showcase your student work. And again, not just the winners, but everybody that, you know, partook in it. So definitely don't skip out on this part because that. this part is also essential for your next year's success because how much you promote at the end of the year and how much you celebrate is going to inspire and encourage you know, next year's candidates and next year's students that want to enter and be like, oh, I remember that. That was so awesome. I got to do it too, you know? So again, so, don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a couple of questions. So we do have a couple of people that need some Dropbox help. So don't worry. We're going to get, we'll have a, we'll have a full, <laughs> a full Zoom just on how to upload. Cause I know sometimes that can be tricky. Um, Crystal is asking when presenting to judges, since it's anonymous, how do you hide the participants info um, on the entry form? I, I just use like a, a piece of cardstock or black piece of paper and taped it over it. Mm -hmm. Just as simple as that, like construction. And paper. So when you get it, so 
what we, well, at least what I experienced last year is when we did digital accept, you know, entry forms, when I accepted it digitally and I was able to go into, again, this, I hate to use this, but I can upload all of my entry forms into Adobe because Adobe does the PDF files yeah. and you can go in there and crop it and like literally split the entry like into two oh, pieces. Yeah. Yeah, so that you're only submitting the bottom portion, which is the student name and their statement, and the top portion, you know, kind of you save it separately. You can do it that way. But again, what Amy said is probably the most, you know, simplest form is just cover it up with something and um, take a picture of it that way. Yeah. Um, yes, the PowerPoint will be, we'll, we're going to post it on the website, our website, which I dropped in the chat a few times um after this and then we're recording this so as soon as i crop it a little bit and get out all my comments in the beginning that were <laughs> nobody was listening to nobody was here uh, we were just trying to figure out how to use the powerpoint um so uh as soon as i crop it i'll put it on youtube and we'll send out the the link so if you want to watch it you're more than welcome to but um yeah so all the links will be live and everything in the pdf wonderful anybody? are there any other questions before i Move on. Into the next. Okay. And of course, the last step five, don't forget to wrap it up. Make sure to thank your students, parent leaders, school personnel, judges, and community businesses for their support. Huge, huge part of this program. Of course, we need to show our appreciation for helping out. Return non-advancing works and contact students who were advancing in the competition. So, you know, by the time you're wrapped up, you're like, oh, I'm done, right? So please make sure to return the artwork because that kind of gets to, you know, get lost in the, in the, you know, the busyness of everything. Host a debrief with your volunteer committees, like what worked, what didn't work, what needs to change, what was excellent, you know, all of that. Update your PTA and PTSA board, executive board with results and record notes and contacts for next year's reflections share. This is huge because it really helps the next person taking over, or perhaps it's you doing it again, just to kind of refresh and remind yourself what you did. So don't forget to thank everybody that helped out. All right, I'm gonna go through um, individual categories and grade divisions real quickly. And again, this is all in the guideline packet, but I know um, lots of questions come up with this. So all entries must be an original creation done by a single student for this year's reflections theme. Um, what we mean by that single student and why I emphasize that is because there's going to be, for instance, dance is the most common category where there might be a group dance, right? So let's say Amy and I decided to do a duo tap number, right? <laughs> only that tap number can only be submitted by one of us. We cannot write Jenny and Amy's tap duo. It has to be just under Jenny or just under Amy. So you can't use that one um, artwork for multiple students, only one single entry, one single student. All right, so to go in detail, dance category, uh, choreography category. So key points are solo and ensemble works of all dance styles are accepted. Um, entrant must be the choreographer and may also be the performer or one of the performers. If background music is used, cite it on the entry form. This is the part that gets skipped quite a bit. Please make sure that when you're when they're submitting anything with music, that the music is cited. It's for copyright reasons, we all know. Uh, video requirements. Length must not exceed five minutes. And I promise you, if it's five minutes and one second, we will cut that one second. So make sure it's five minutes um, or less. Um, size, file size, 1000 MB or less and accepted formats. Again, this is huge. This part is, I'm just gonna emphasize it in this category, but it has to be in this format because when they go, when we go from county to state this year, we're gonna upload it onto, a portal that will not accept any other formats, right? So please make sure that it is in these files. Film production category, same kind of idea, key points, accepted short film styles include animation, narrative, documentary, experimental, or media presentation. All screenwriting, directing, and editing must be done by the student producer. If background music is used, please cite it on the entry form. We do not accept PowerPoint presentations. That is not part of this. So we cannot do, we cannot do any PowerPoints. Also, um, a really common question we got last year was, um, my, my kiddo wants to, uh, 
record, uh, do a film production on their Roblox. And again, I'm not really familiar with Roblox and all the different games that are in it. But basically, the student wanted to just record themselves playing Roblox in this world that they created. We can't do that because the world the student didn't create. So yes, maybe their avatar was created by them, but everything else is a copyright of Roblox. So they can't be submitted as an original piece of art work. So please be mindful of that when you're accepting those entries. Cite the music. I'm gonna say this like probably 10 more times. Um, again, video requirements must not exceed five minutes, 10,000 MB or less, accepted formats is AVI, MP4, and MOV. Use of PowerPoint is prohibited. We get so many PowerPoints and it's super cool that they know how to do it, but unfortunately it doesn't qualify as a film production category. Literature category. Accepted forms of fiction and nonfictions include so many ways that they can be part of the literature category. And again, like I mentioned before, utilizing your ELA department to help with it. Teachers love this. We got so many poems <laughs> last year because there was like a huge poem thing in the curriculum. Um, like I said, there's so many essays, poetry, screenplays, scripts, all of that. Um, the biggest Part, uh, the most important part of this is that, again, um, it's written in their primary langu language if an interpretive English translation is also attached. So let's say, you know, English is not their first language. They can do it in Spanish and attach a translation to it. Um, use of copyrighted materials prohibited. Um, again, this is a part where if you are using judges that are in this profession, they'll be able to catch this right away. I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, I will know if it's, I won't. <laughs> I, I can't, I don't qualify as a literature judge because I won't know if it was copyrighted or not. But luckily, there is a wonderful app um, now available on everyone's phone that you can scan writing pieces and, and they, it's like an AI thing. Um, they'll be able to tell you if it was copied or not. So um, when it reaches the state level and national, it is heavily looked into. So it would be really unfortunate if it advanced that high up and we were, you know, having to disqualify them because it was, you know, copied. Um, other considerations must not exceed 2000 words. This is why it's very important they write their word count. Uh, so it can save you time from sitting there and have to count every, every word of every entry. Um, must include word count on the application form. Um, maybe handwritten or typed single-sided print on um, eight and a half by 11 paper and PDF file. Music composition category. Key points, all music styles and combinations of instruments, instrumentation are accepted. Um, the entrant must be the composer and may also be the performer or one of the performers and use of copyrighted materials prohibited. Again, we do use an app for this again. Um, we play the music and see if it was at any point copied from another, you know, music, uh, another uh, song. As you notice on here, I get this a lot. People say, oh, what's this? They have to write their own music. This is only for middle and high school. So if you are a middle and high school local unit doing reflections, um, this is required as their submission. They must submit their original music that they wrote. So those are just some examples right there. They can, you know, do it digitally or handwrite it. Length must not exceed five minutes, file size. And of course the formats are MP4 and uh, WAV, WAV file. So again, this is not for the elementary. This is for middle and high school. They have to write out their original uh, composition. Photography, single print, digital image, collages are not accepted. Like it cannot be, you know, clippings from a magazine or any of that. It has to be their own. Um, they could, they must be the photographer. So I get this question a lot. If they're the photographer, but they want to be in it, can they do a selfie? Absolutely. As you notice on this, um, look right on your, um, I guess the first photograph photograph right there of the girl with the book on her head, she used a tripod. So yeah, absolutely, they can be in their own photo, but they must be the photographer as well. Uh, may use a variety of digital ed editing techniques, including, but not limited to, multiple expo exposure, a negative sandwich, or photogram. And those are the details on the print. So it must be no smaller than five and five by seven, no larger than eight by 10, mounted on a mat or a poster board, no larger than 11 by 14. 
frames. We don't need frames. It doesn't have to be frames. So we did get a, a, photog a photograph in like a glass frame. So we're not accepting frames. Um, include one digital image of artwork with your submission in those particular files. And um, the dimensions are written on there. And of course, the accepted file formats are JPEG, JPG, and PNG. Sorry, I'm just kind of blowing through this pretty quickly. And again, this is all available to you in the guidelines. And the key point for visual arts, this is the biggest category that we get. Um, works of both fine and design arts are accepted, including but not limited to architectural drawing or models, ceramics, collage, computer generated images, graphics, crafts, drawing, fashion, jewelry, fiber work, mixed media, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. It's like so many categories, right? So pretty much all of it is accepted. 2D works, mounted on sturdy material, no larger than 12 by 16 with matting. And of course, uh, no frames. Include one digital image of the artwork as well with the submission. And you're probably wondering, what do you mean, Jenny? Like, what do you mean digital image? So as a local unit, um, you should be able to um, have a USB drive that you're going to keep all of these entries onto. So that's what we mean by including a digital image. Load that onto your USB drive. Um, 3D works no larger than 12 by 12 by 12. Include three digital images. And what we why three? Because we want the work of art in all different um, uh, views. So it has to have three different images of different angles. And then the accepted file formats are listed right there. I'm totally over time, aren't I? Um, special artist division. Um, key points, the special artist division welcomes students from all grades and offers non-artistic accommodations for students to participate fully in the PTA reflections. It's any student that identifies as having a disability or receives services under IDEA, IDEA, ADA, or have an IEP, Section 504, may enter in the Special Artist Division. And this is for, um, now I get this question, what do you mean all grades? Like, where do I put it? So basically, whether it's a primary, a middle, high, they can all submit into the special artist division. And we you can separate it by that grade division within the art special artist division, if that makes sense. Um, accommodations, non-artistic accommodations, in, in, for example, adaptive technology, transcribing and holding a camera. Like I mentioned with the photography, the student has to be the one being the photographer. But in this case, for a special artist, Perhaps a mom might hold a camera for them, or perhaps they use a different device. Um, they are allowed to get this assistance um, under this division. Assistance must refrain from being involved in the artistic process, meaning you can help, you know, um, formulate whatever um, original artwork that they're doing, but the idea has to come from the students. And this is very, um, there's a lot of room for interpretation here, but we hope that you understand what this means, meaning the idea of the original work has to come from the student. Everything else, they are allowed to be helped, um, assisted with, and when they fall under this division. That kind of goes into detail for detail of all the categories and all the divisions, and I'm so sorry if I went over time. Um, again, just to recap in like a 10 second, register, promote, share with your families, promote, 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 <laughs> and then you do your submission deadlines, you do your judging, and then you do your celebration. So that kind of encapsulates everything all into one. Oof, I'm sorry, I talk a lot. Amy, um, any questions? No, I think I, there's no questions right now. Does anyone have any questions? You can unmute if you'd like, or you can type it in the chat, whatever is more comfortable for you. That was a lot of information. So yes. if you think of something later, you can always reach out to Jenny at, what is your email, Jenny? Reflections at hccptaptsa.org. Um, now, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about what about the submission submission. Don't worry about that now, I say. I've been telling everybody just hold off on that because we, again, we're going to do a whole different just on submission workshop. Um, We'll send you all the detailed information on how to do it. We'll help you through the whole Dropbox scenario. But for now, I think the most important thing that we need to focus on is 
promoting and how you're going to promote way, the way you're going to do it, whether it's in person, whether it's online, whether you're going to do all of this digitally or not. That's a set that you need to set now, I think, and prioritize is your deadline and whether you're going to choose to do it digitally or in person or both, because that's going to determine how you're going to promote and what you're going to actually promote, like your flyers, you know, all of that, that those kinds of information. So it stays the same all throughout with um, minimal confusion. So, Jessica? Um, yeah. Oh, well, what's the deadline to register real quick? Sorry about that, Jessica. So for national PTA, the deadline to register, you know, wait for it, wait for it. It's February. <laughs> but you have time. Yes. You have so if you lot. forget, you still have time. Yes, because you got to remember um, it's February. So it's far from now, but you're at a local level. So you register and then it goes to you advance to county and then you advance to state. And then let's say they advance to national. And then all of a sudden nationals like this school never registered it's, it gets disqualified. There are no exceptions. So that's why we're saying, even though the deadline's so long in my head, the deadline's already passed. Yeah. <laughs> like it's Just something sure. that has to be done. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because it would be a shame. Jessica, I'm sorry to cut you off. What's your question? No, you're perfectly fine. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. For the special artists division, just had a quick question there. For the entries into that one, are those entries, since it's all grades, are they in their own division or will those students be into the other grade levels based on where they fall? They're in their own division. Okay, They're perfect. That's what I just wanted to make sure on. Absolutely. They're in their own division. And then you guys kind of separate it out to judge it exactly within that division exactly yes right anybody else got anything i think this is such a cool program to be able to bring to your you know your uh access point classrooms to be able to just give them something that the whole school is doing and everybody's involved in it so and there's opportunity for all sorts of different artists and artwork and I just want to point out, if I know you guys can see the screen. Look at how amazing this is. <laughs> I mean, this is all from our students. Yeah. I just, I get blown away every time I look at it. The one in the middle top, right in the center where there's like a boy running and there's like a little uh, street market that he drew. He actually was a national. He won all the way up to national. Oh, awesome. Just amazing. Amazing. So yes. I just want to say, you know, any questions, please email me. I'm very quick with responding. Um, if you're like, you know what, Jenny, I want to do this, but I have nobody that can help me. I will come help you. I will come to your school. I will promote it for you. You need somebody to make a flyer. Absolutely. I'm your girl. I can do it for you. So please don't get discouraged if you just don't have enough, you know, manpower to do it. Because really at the end of the day, once you kind of get the gist of it, I'm, our school, I'm not going to lie, we had reflections and it was one person for three years. She did it all by herself. Yeah. So it is possible. You can absolutely, if you don't have other people that can help, but of course, you know, more the merrier, but I can be that Mary for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll <come help. laughs> I told you she's the best reflections chair ever. So. I love it. I mean, I find this to be so fun. So, uh, and I do have all the resources, it, the, all of our forms and resources are all up on our website. If you're looking for more, like, hey, I want something where I want promotional material. And I believe we share this. If you follow Florida State PTA um, Facebook, we did share it on there. But if you're like, hey, I want my own link, like, can you email it to me? I can email you a link where National PTA has so many flyers that you can just edit. edit. Yeah. Yeah. They're so awesome. easy. They're so easy to, it, everything. If you go to, if you just type in National PTA Reflections into Google, it will, it'll pull it up and you can go in and there's timelines, there's volunteer signups, the rubrics are there. Um, it really is a one-stop shop kind of a program. And, and like Jenny said, if you find, wow, that's a lot of categories. I don't think I want to do that. Pick, pick two, you know, you can do really well and, you know, knock that out of the park and then maybe add one, another one next year. But um, it's, it's a really fun program. Our visual, um, our visual, our drama teacher made it part of her curriculum in our high school last year. So uh, 
our students, they all got to pick whatever they wanted to do. And so I, we did have, we had a couple go on, I think to uh, state, but it's just, it's fun to see what they come up with. Um, and it's fun to work with them. So we also host a po poetry jam in conjunction with our, um, it's like a different event, but it's a reflection as event as well. So absolutely. And um, this is just because I happen to just be the Florida Reflections Chair. And a lot of people didn't know this. And quite frankly, I didn't know it either until I was in it. When do you go up to state, they win money. Yeah. So yeah, straight up yeah. cash. You get a check cash. written out. So it's kind of awesome. Um, I mean, at every level, at every point, you know, at local, your school level, you're going to do some kind of ribbon ceremony and award, you know, Hillsborough County, we do the, the trophies and ribbons yeah. mixed and whatnot. And then the state does all trophies and they're awesome. And once you get to national, it's just money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're awesome. actually doing money this year. I submitted a budget for our high school because we do money, uh, awards for the poetry jam. And so I kind of looked at last year's submissions. I was like, it really wouldn't be that much. So mm -hmm. we're going to do first and second prize. We'll have a cash prize. So that's amazing. Yeah. So hopefully that will get them excited. I saw something really cool at Coleman. They do a, um, they do a winner's like luncheon with at the administrators and the teachers that supported the program. And they all like, for all of the students. So I was like, that's a really cool idea. I love that. So I think I'm going to steal that or borrow or, you know. And just to share my one last tidbit that I'm, I'm trying to plan right now is to have like a Bob Ross moment. I'm trying to get like a really famous artist to like do that. a Zoom art class for us where, you know. That would be so cool. Yeah. So I'm reaching out to a lot of my artist friends, you know, and other fancy parts of the world to see if they will volunteer their time. So, you know, maybe a kid doesn't have, you know, the idea or the help at home or wherever they may be, or just need that little bit of encouragement. We're going to offer a free little art class and promote reflections that way. So everyone can hop on and paint together. Well, I have an idea for you to reach out. Maybe you haven't, maybe you have already reached out to them, but well, I'll tell you afterwards, but yeah. And you know, like Amy, she probably knows everybody in this town. So <laughs> we are full of resources and you yes. just get stuck and you can't find anyone. And it's just, just running out of ideas. Don't I hesitate. Think... to come. We'll find oh. you somebody, some way, somehow. Yeah. We'll help you. I, I'm always, I, I'm always trying to connect and network people together. So I love to do that. And please reach out to your other local units around you. Like Martinez, Schwarzkopf, and Steinbrenner are all like, you guys are so close right there. So it's it's only natural that you would collaborate and maybe do have your, you could even have your high school students come and do help with an art program or an art night for your students. It would help them get hours. It would help them kind of, I know, elementary school students always look up to high school students. So it's super fun. So there's so many different ideas. Just think outside the box, I guess. So. Absolutely. Any other questions I can answer for oh. anyone? Is anyone from Martinez or McKittrick on now? I don't know. I think so. I thought I saw, did I see someone here? I have to call them afterwards. Is there something I can ask? Megan called me in the middle of this. I'm happy to ask. Oh, to collaborate. Oh, re which school are you at? Are you talking? Oh, she's at Steinbrenner. Yeah. Um, I will I'll drop your email if you want. I can um I can give it to Megan and pass it on if you'd like. It'd be super cool. Wouldn't that be fun to like have a bunch of schools doing it? You guys are so close. We don't really have close, super close schools, but you guys are close to yeah. Yeah, I'll share your I'll share your info with her. Hopefully, you guys could do something. And if you do something like that, please invite me. I would love to come. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a student this year. So, um, in public school, I she's in college. So, um, 
she just graduated. So time for another one, Amy. And then, Start all over. And then, <laughs> just adopt a bunch of different ones. How about that? Um, well, thank you, Jenny. Thank Absolutely. you so much. This was awesome. And I hope everybody got some inspiration from this and maybe some um, ideas. And again, reach out to me if you can't, if you can't remember reflections, you can know you can remember info, just info at hccptaptsa.org. And I will get it to Jenny, but um, we're all here to help and support you and hopefully get our students nationally recognized for their wonderful abilities. So um, thank you for what you do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for coming, guys. Good night. <laughs>